Hey, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be doing another build video. It's been kind of a while since I've done one. All right, so this one, this uh, particular build, we're going to be using a mini champ. And what you see here, we have these titanium scales that we're going to be using. They're like this rock pattern. And we're going to be using these neon green G10 liners that I already had made. All right, and also we're going to be using the Spyderco Honeybee. So we'll get to that in a minute. So let's go and start with the disassembly. So, since I went a bit far with the drilling, some of the, the uh, tools have already come out. So I'll set these aside now. And these are the springs. Over here. All right, and next we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open up this honeybee. All right, and a cool trick that one of my subscribers on YouTube gave me as an idea was, if you've seen my older videos, I always drilled out the hidden little pivot um, this little pin in here. And so basically I was giving it a tip, but all you have to do is you put in a tool and you kind of pry like this, and back and forth, and there you go. As simple as that. Literally it takes just a couple of seconds and you have the spider co out. All right, so this is after cleaning them up. And basically I just washed them with uh, some dish soap and hot water. All right, so you can see they're all cleaned up. And this can be kind of the basic um, setup plan we're gonna have. And so out of, out of all these tools, we're going to modify the spider cup. So modified soap will fit. We're gonna modify the ruler. And we're gonna turn it into a saw. And we're gonna modify the original blade. We're going to turn it into a serrated blade. All right, so the file and the scissors will remain original. And these three tools will have to be uh, worked on a bit. All right, so here you see we have the Spyderco blade, and I have the original blade on top of it, just kind of being held together with a uh, a drill bit as the working as the yeah the axle per se, if you want to call it. What I'm going to do is just use this little sharpie, kind of make a, just a rough kind of marking of where I'm what I'm going to need to grind off. All right, and this is what we got. All right, so we're gonna shape this out. This is the grinder. All right, so I finished up um, reshaping the knife. So here it is kind of testing it out. As you can see it snaps closed. This bottom part does not tap anywhere. The tip doesn't stick out. And it snaps open and it is nice and straight. All right, so that's all for the spider knocks, or the spider co blade. All right, so next up we're going to be doing the saw. So here we're starting out with the original Victorinox ruler. We have another uh, Victorinox saw with a 91 millimeter. So what we're going to do is we're going to line these up about like this. I'm going to clamp it. All right, so you can see I've made the first cuts along here. And I removed, I removed the saw. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these like sections. I'm going to split them in half. Again, with the drum roll. All right, so you can see I've made cuts in both directions. And I'm going to use this diamond file. 
and just basically along the, the cuts that I made, kind of at an angle, just begin filing. Alright, so I finished up with the filing. So you can see it's got all the teeth. And so here's gonna be a little test. There's a little piece of board. Just gonna run it back and forth. Alright, and it all the way down to the next board. This one down here. Alright, as so you can see, the saw works. Cuts nice and well. Can wipe that off. And there we go, let's get some focus. That's how it turned out. All right, so now let's do the serrated blade next, and we'll be done with the modding. All right, so I finished up all the, the modifications. So here's our serrated blade. Here's the saw. And here's our spider co. All right, and then I need to um, basically degrease all the parts. And so what I'm going to use is just this cotton disc and some acetone. I'm just going to wipe these down. All right, the next step is basically we're just going to use some fingernail polish and we're going to um, apply it to any part of the tool that is going to be basically pivoting or rubbing. All right, so now what we need to do is wait for these to dry and then we can begin the acid etching process. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and begin acid etching. And so this is ferric chloride, and I'll, I'll include links to this in the description below, so you'll be able to find that if you want to repeat this process. And I've also noticed that whenever the acid is kind of warm, or you know, not necessarily like hot, but whenever it's warm, it tends to work a bit better. And so I've suspended the tools from this aluminum um, wire, basically, that I've bent. And all we do is just we're going to go ahead and drip this in there. Like that. And we'll start the timer. Oops, wrong button. All right, so we got the timer going. All right, so here we are again. It's been another minute and 30 seconds. So we'll go ahead and take this out. And we'll go clean them up again. And we'll see how they look. All right, so this is what they look like after rinse them off. So you can see the saw looks pretty good. And the serrated blade also looks nice and dark. And it looks like the spider blade is going to need another, another round in the acid. But I'm going to go ahead and we'll continue this process off camera. And then once I'm done with the etching, then I'll show you how it's turning out. All right, so finished up with the acid etching. And so here they are. That's how it turned out. So you can see they're almost all the same kind of color. The ones that are a bit wetter will be maybe a bit darker at the moment. All right, so next thing we're gonna do now is we're going to um, stone wash these. All right, so finished up with the the stone wash. So this is how it turned out. Which is nice and yeah, I like how it turned out. All right, next step we're gonna do is we're gonna take we're gonna wash off now the. The fingernail polish because it's no longer needed. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and wash this off. All right, so I finished up the uh, cleaning up the uh, fingernail polish. I've oiled them up, and so we can begin assembly now. All right, so that is layer one. All right, and there it is, it is assembled. 
So what I do is, uh, before we actually finish assembly, uh, like painting it shut, is we're going to make sure that, first of all, that all the tools are accessible. All right, so we can get to our Spyderco blade. We can get to our scissors without any trouble. Really nice and snappy. All right, that was a bit not tight enough to make sure they're all tight. All right, good. All right, we can access our file. Saw. That's right, a blade. All right, so basically the setup is good. Layout's good. All we need now is just we're gonna um, put some of these brass, brass washers on the other side and we'll paint it shut. We can snap the scales on there. It'll be ready to go. All right, so there's kind of a demonstration of what it's gonna look like. All right, so I have put the, the brass grommets, washers, whatever, on top. And also using the drum roll, I have cut off the excess um, of the brass rods. All right, so you can see I left just a little bit. Let's see if we get the focus in there for you. All right, anyways, so just a little bit. And we're gonna be really careful because with these small, thin brass rods, it doesn't take much to get it painted closed. We also wanna pay attention, make sure that we are hitting it flat, otherwise, It'll go in cricket. All right, so literally, that should be all. Let's go ahead and what we'll do to test and make sure that we have it tight enough. So we'll put the tool, and we'll see if it has any wobble. All right, and so there's no wobble in it. Now the G10, uh, it'll give some some movement, some flex to the tool, but I don't feel any like wobble. All right, and then we want to check and make sure it's not too tight by snapping it shut. All right, so if it snaps, it means it's not too tight. And we move on to the next, to the next rod. That's it, it's successfully closed. So now what we need to do is we're gonna sharpen up these tools and basically just attach the, the scales. All right, so you can see, it's a good angle on there. And all I do, Instead of going on this side, I find it more convenient for me. To go like that, upside down. All right, I'm gonna finish sharpening this up off camera. So I don't have this camera in between me and the, uh, the sharpening uh, tool here. All right, so finished up with the sharpening. So I'll go ahead and show you that. All right, so you can see, and we'll do this for demonstration. As you can see, it cuts shaves. <laughs> All right, and we sharpened up the serrated blade. All right, so you can see right there, it's been sharpened up. And it's also, you can see it's kind of cut into my skin a bit. So it's nice and sharp. All right, so next thing we're gonna do now is we're going to um, go ahead and degrease both the knife and the scales, just to make sure that there's nothing oily on it that's going to make it difficult to epoxy the scales on. So the next thing what we're going to do is, um, we're gonna use this two-part epoxy. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix them together. I right, see so just a little bit on the tip. If you overdo it, it comes back to bite you, trust me.
Alright, that's pretty good. And just open it like this. Okay. It looks pretty good. And now we'll do the other side. All right, so this has had time to set. And like I said, I'll use this kind of as an example to see, make sure that it's dry. And so you can see this epoxy is hardened, which means that the scales have also set. All right. So that means it's not gonna come off. All right, next thing we're gonna do now, I already said, uh, the, the key ring, I've also have acid etched. And so all we need to do now, I just need to attach this. All right, so now we have our key ring. And the last bit, kind of like the icing on the cake, we have this box of Victorinox goodies, all kinds of different colored uh, tweezers and lanyards and all this stuff. So we're gonna to go ahead and take out a set of green tweezers and a green pick. Alright, so we got the green pick, green tweezers. And actually what we could do, we could even add the green lanyard to kind of make it all finished up. Alright, so with the uh, 58 millimeter knife, it really makes a difference because the, uh, the tweezers and pick they are reversible and so either side matches. All right, so you can see that actually makes it look really nice. I like how it sets, how it fits. And we can put this lane through here, just like this. All right, check that out, it looks great. All right, so there we go, there's our knife. Our scissors. All right, let's go and show the snappiness. There's the serrated blade. The saw. Over here we have our file. All right, so that is all for this custom uh, spider knocks. Look how it turned out. All right, and a bit of an update on the XAVT. Uh, I'm still I'm still getting some of the some of the plans together on what I want to do to mod it. And actually, I'd like to give you guys kind of a kind of an option in this. So this this is the original aluminum liners that the uh, Swiss Army knives come with, and this has been anodized. All right, so using electricity, using some uh, some dye, the aluminum is anodized, and so it's not paint. And so you can see, whenever I scratch it with a knife, you don't have any paint coming off because you've literally, basically, the the aluminum has been turned red. And so I'm thinking about maybe doing this with the XAVT. Um, so basically, uh, dyeing it, uh, kind of like dyeing, but it's called anodizing the aluminum liners, uh, get it some color. Or the other option I'm thinking about is something like like some carbon fiber maybe scales i'm sorry not scales liners and so both would be new because i've actually i've never made a um a custom swiss army knife with carbon fiber scales and so we could do that or or the uh the anodized liners and so i'm still kind of decide, trying to decide which i would rather do and if so you go ahead in the comments let me know what what you would rather see done on the xavt and another question is that I'd like to ask you guys about uh, customizing the XAVT is are you interested in or would, do you think it'd be worth adding a Spyderco blade to the XAVT or go ahead and leave it as is? So anyways, give me some ideas. Let me know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.